let's continue our discussion how we can build up the writing habit in our classrooms and within this uh, main topic we've got a subtopic which is how we can build collaborative writing collaboration is important is key in in any l2 classroom collaboration means um, uh, the sharing um, the way students interact with each other the students uh, the way they learn from each other so collaboration is key and it's important for a language teacher to be trained how to foster this element in a uh, in in an EFL classroom and from my own pers personal perspective as as an EFL teacher in the Pakistani context in in some other countries I've seen that experienced and skilled teachers have this ability to develop collaboration among students. However, uh, the newly hired teachers or newly appointed teachers tend to lose this period, or if they try, it, there is a lot of uh, um, like wastage of time. So it has to be there has to be made balance between how this collaboration is built up or brought in the classroom. So. What is important in this regard is to bring in some activities which are based on group work, which are based on pair work. So group activities can be like in the form of uh, like, again, while making groups, it's important that we don't put all types of proficiency students into one group. Like, for example, we don't put high level proficiency students in one group and low level. So there should be sort of balance between high proficiency and low proficiency. So there should be a kind of uh, match between different students. So each student can benefit from each other. So activities in an EFL classrooms are important because they allow students to have an access to each other's mind. When they share knowledge, they come to know about what's going on in each other's mind how they are practicing, how they are writing. So remember, if you want to become an efficient teacher, and if you want to train your students efficiently into writing, it's important that you train them how to work in groups, in pairs. And it's your job as an EFL teacher to bring in um, like those kinds of groups which, are, which can cater to the needs of the students. And when, when you are involving your students into group work or pair work, it's important that you don't become judgmental. By judgmental, I mean when, for instance, if one group happens to complete a task earlier as compared to the second or third group, you, are not, you don't have to point out the uh, low-performing group because such judgment can further affect their motivation, can bring in elements of anxiety. So here, the teacher role is key. And it has, like in terms of understanding the psychosocial processes going on in students' minds. So in this regard, when you are using collaboration, when you want to bring in collaboration amongst your students, it's important that you use continuously make the use of board. Like with the coming of uh, multimedia, it has been observed that now L2 teachers tend not to use too much of board or if they use, it's not used efficiently. So using board efficiently is important where you can write uh, sentences uh, any any kind of writing, sentence by sentence. For example, if you are training your students to write a letter, you can write it sentence by sentence. So students can think of, students can process the information, and they can look at the suggestions, they can look at the corrections, and they will recreate the story by themselves by copying the teacher. So this kind of habit, this kind of exercise in the classroom enable the students notice the gap between their current performance and desired performance. 
the performance which is required by the teacher. So noticing is, as I have already been pointing out, emphasizing from time to time that noticing is important in, in a language, English language classroom, because it makes them students consciously notice and make them aware of their shortcomings, um, think of their strengths, think, think of their wants and lacks and strengths and weaknesses. So there can be different activities in a collaborative classroom. For example, students can be asked to listen first, and then they can be asked to work in group work, in pair work. And then um, a teacher asks students what they have heard and what they haven't heard, and teacher allows students take notes. And then it, the paragraph or the letter is read for the third time, and which is why the story is recreated with, with the language used by the teacher, with the words uh, heard in the classroom. So um, at, towards the end of these activities, teacher asks students to look at each other's work, and this allows them to develop kind of harmony, com kind of compassion, kind of understanding how other people are working. And this is, and then the teacher may show the original story. And by showing the original story will help students notice the gap between what they have written and what was desired. So this is how when in groups or in pairs, uh, collaboration is uh, actually exercised in the classroom that allows them to see different versions and correct their own version.